Welcome to the Quick Stop F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Joining me as ever, the effervescent queen of F1 punditry, Tandy Sabanda. How are you? You like I'm that? I'm good. Yeah, 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 I did. Oh, oh look what is I'm going on here. Pennies. <laughs> I'm so Why sorry. have you got pennies for? Please, please, we're going through a recession. No, I was going to say, times are tough. <laughs> you're Mate. keeping the pennies. Wow. Uh, yeah. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Did you have a good weekend? I did. I did nothing. Mm. And I was in my house. And that's fine. Uh, edited that's some fine. content. And mm. yeah, we will talk after this because we've just released some merch. That was awesome. Uh, and mm. uh, yeah, life is great. But I, I went to two barbecues this weekend. Sorry. I know okay. you wanted to. Yeah. I went to two barbecues this weekend. Okay, nice. How are they? Yeah. Sound wicked, food. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you're watching this, making sure make sure you're giving this a like and a subscribe. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to us on podcast, make sure you're giving a five star review on Spotify. We're still under 300 five star reviews, 279. Let's get it to 300 and five star mm-hmm. review on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate all of you, thank you so much. But today, it's not often, it's not often <laughs> that you could say you have had on your show a professional sports person yeah someone that's played Mm. at the highest level okay the Mm. top of the top uh i'm so happy uh to say we've got former nfl player current content creator within the nfl space and huge f1 fan darius butler how's it going Man, it's going great, man. I'm so happy to be. I'm excited to be here. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot of fun, man. I appreciate that intro that, too. Nice intro. Yeah, Thank that you. was that was a great intro. Did you, did you think of that before? I've been. I or was honestly you, like, I was like, we've got, we've got like, that? I didn't practice it, but I was like, I've got to hit oh, certain God. things. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 let yeah. me like make sure I really, because <laughs> this is a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. Darius, when, when you just when you spoke, then it literally felt like I was on ESPN. I'm not gonna. Lie. <laughs> I was like, I was just like in my mind. I was like, whoa! I was transported. But for those who may not be aware, look, we're based in London, and there are mm-hmm. NFL fans in London. But we're based in London, so um, to people who may not know you, like, who are you? What are you doing? All right, well, sure. I, I, I'll start from <laughs> the, from the beginning. Actually, I was yeah. actually born over in that continent in Europe. I was mm. born in Germany. Yeah, uh, dad was in the Big army. Yeah, so I uh, moved from Germany, came over to Cali, uh, and ended up growing up in South Florida, obviously over here in the States. Um, went to UConn, got drafted by the Patriots, uh, mm. New England Patriots, you know, played it, actually played my rookie year over in London against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Oh, nice. And then I uh, played nine, yep, played nine years in the NFL, ended my career in uh, Indianapolis. That's the Colts helmet behind me yeah. for the last six years there. So did nine years total. Um, in the National Football League, uh, enjoyed it, had a hell of a run, um, got out of there in one piece. And now uh, I'm doing something I never thought I would be doing, which is uh, in the media space. You know, I'm a, 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 an analyst, a, a sports media personality, um, obviously, first and foremost, talking football. But now, shockingly, for a lot of people, my second favorite sport is F1, which is nice. wild because I grew up a huge basketball fan. Fan, uh, but uh, after football, it's kind of all F1 for me, and it's kind of been brand new. So uh, that's that's where I'm at today. Oh, man. Nice, I love that so much for you. So could you kind of tell us how you got into Formula One? Because there's a perception amongst Europeans and those who have always been in the Formula One space that they're like, how are the Americans actually picking up on Formula One? Is it through content creators or is it actually through watching Formula One or is it just a genuine love for a set and driver to then mash into whatever you want to do? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, I'll speak for me. I guess I could speak for a few other people, obviously, over here in the States. But, um, mm. you know, the, the media, the content put out by Liberty Media, which on Netflix and they, they drive to survive. I know it had a huge um, impact on the uptick over here, but that actually wasn't what got me into it. I actually was just one, one random uh, Sunday morning, just had, you know, ESPN on and um, it was the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, I believe. And uh, just watching it and watching the lead up to it because, it, you know, we have motorsports over here. We got NASCAR. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Indianapolis for six years. We got Indy 500 there. Uh, but I was I was never really into it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Growing up, you know, kind of in the South NASCAR, 
a lot of those they had like confederate flags and all type of other yeah shit over there. i was so gonna it's say like, oh, that's not really yeah. you know for me that space <laughs> and then indy 500 was you know going around us over it was kind of boring to me uh but the f1 stuff uh literally just seeing the behind, under the helmet seeing the drivers the different teams learning more about them actually seeing you know all the cameras and all the people you know on the grid like before yeah. lights out like that was kind of cool and different like you know dudes just walking around with the mic like hey you know put the mic in his face like that's that's different you know because as an athlete once it's like almost game time like we're kind of everybody else is kind of out of it we're kind of in this bubble and getting in our zone so it's different for them um, and then once the race started, I watched the entire race and I was hooked. So after that, I went back to drive and survive, binged all four seasons. Wow. Um, you know, obviously I was super pissed off how they did Lewis at the end of the last <laughs> season. I'm like, wow. So they're catching up. And I just caught up uh, right in the middle of uh, this this season. It's been awesome, especially in the uh, football offseason. So let me just get this straight, right? You just said F1 your second favorite sport. But yeah, you got into quick. it last November, basically. Yeah, that's it. And that race was a man. I love that because that mm. race, honestly, the race where we were, um, who was it? It's Max, obviously, doing all of the brake testing, and you know, the Lewis going into the back of him, and all of yeah. those things like that. Uh, it was a crazy race to get into. So I can imagine mm-hmm. that if any race was going to get you into F one, it would be that. So. I want to, before we get into like F1 in general, um, you are, you know, I think we're talking off camera about the fact that you're kind of building your own kind of like platforms to create content on and obviously your media personality anyway. But yep. what was it about, why, I guess, why that route out of, uh, out of retirement from, from the NFL? Like, I guess, why not coaching or why not mm-hmm. something else? Like, what, what is it that kind of drew you into, uh, becoming a media personality, essentially. Yeah, well, like I said, um, I never, this was something I didn't plan for, or didn't see uh, 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 as, you know, my future after football, but I did um, explore it a little bit. So my last year in the off season, I went to like a broadcast boot camp oh. just to kind of see behind the scenes, how it works, with TV and everything. And honestly, and then I had some opportunities on the different networks and I would go and, and do basically auditions mm. and uh, they would want kind of like, and it would always come back and kind of like, oh, you know, we want, we want more, just a little more of a person, yeah. more of this, more of that. In my natural demeanor, you know, I'm pretty, you know, laid back. I, I like, you know, I'm pretty locked in on like the facts of things I talk about. Um, it's real analytical sometimes. Yeah. And it's not necessarily like, oh, wow, this media, this Stephen <laughs> A. Smith that's just up here yelling um, Dan and Dad, which, you know, he, he does a great job of his job, but that just wasn't my route. Mm. So, in some way, I, w- I would say I was a little discouraged from the network TV because, you know, behind the scenes, you know, it's, you know, it's a bunch of 40, 50, 6 year old, you know, white men running the show, telling everybody, you know, what the talking points are and different things. Yeah. So it wasn't really for me. But my guy, Pat McAfee, he's huge yeah. in the content cre- yeah. creation yeah, and on YouTube and all those different things. So being but my, my former teammate, we're pretty close. So I started my podcast, just a podcast. And he actually let me shoot it uh, remotely. Uh, I actually started during the pandemic, during the onset of the pandemic, nice. in July of 2020. And uh, he helped me get that started. And that was an avenue for me to create content, but just my way. You know, I'm speaking about it. I have my former teammate, Antoine Bethea. And then just from that, organically, the network started reaching out again. Like, yeah. hey, can you come into a spot now? Can you talk? Yeah. So now it, was, it got to a point where it's literally every network reaching out to have me on. And I kind of had to build it up almost kind of like in music. Sometimes you got to sell some mixtapes out your trunk, yeah. build your own buzz, and then you can approach the labels and get better deals and you have more leverage that way. So that's kind of where I'm at going into this season. I have, I'm going to have a show on ESPN. I'm going to be live Congrats. in the studio. That's awesome. Um, that's yeah, so, so sick. It, it, Congrats. Yeah, I'm gonna... It all came in due yeah. time. Yeah, well so done, I, I man. Appreciate, I appreciate well, it. Well, I am going to say that, Gabby space, is... It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, we do know the media space. But what I am going <laughs> to say is you have a great voice we have several voices that we've had on this podcast and i think you have a great voice for just appreciate that together. that's a hell of yeah. a compliment appreciate that no, <laughs> you, you do and she's not very she doesn't give out those compliments easily okay <laughs> i don't well, I, hey, I appreciate that so, um no i think there's something that you've said there that really resonates because mm. 
I guess we're doing the same thing, right? I think if either of us try to rock up and I guess create present, uh, yeah. careers as presenters on on Sky Sports or one of the other, other channels, <laughs> you know, I don't think they they're going to take us, us on. To go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't they think. would run up our tweets and be like, um, did you say this about us? Yeah, um, um, which is probably not the best way to go about it. But, um, but um, that thing of building your own platform, right? Yeah. And and so I guess yeah. it's so important, like that ownership. And it, I think that's what some people are maybe quite scared of, right? Of taking that leap and, and building something and growing something organically. Because I think someone said it, uh, the other day when you build it they will come right and yeah. and you've uh, and it's perfect. tough it's tough too it, it's a much tougher route to go it's a and another thing that's very much like you guys is you know I don't really sugarcoat shit or I don't really say things to make people feel you know warm and fuzzy or comfortable mm. and sometimes you know I'm, I get straight to the chase if it's something because sometimes especially post 2020 after the George Floyd murder and things yeah you know people try to get you to talk about things or react to certain things or race. And I'm like, look, that's, you know, that's about the money. This is, this is it about, it affect the bottom line, blah, blah. blah. So mm -hmm. sometimes they want you to speak a certain way and I'm yeah. not, I don't play that type of game. And as a former athlete, yeah, it's easier to get in those doors because you already have a name. People already know who you are and things like that. But it's also easier to kind of get put in that box mm. into where they want you to yeah. speak or say things or look a certain way or do certain things. So uh, most of the time, I go, I'll be on national TV with a hoodie and a hat on because, <laughs> like, I'm in my house talking about football. Like, I don't yeah. need to throw a suit on. Now, if I'm in the studio and this is, it's two other guys up there with a suit on, I'm gonna throw a suit on. Yeah, of but course. I'm in my home doing this, and uh, that's kind of very a big reason why you know Pat McAfee kind of cuts through the way that he yes. does he's in there, sleeveless, mm -hmm. just talking sports, talking everyday um, life, and it's a lot of things. A lot of people behind the scenes with the media space where it's like, all right, we want you to say these things. You can't say those things. You can't yeah. speak on that. So uh, it was I said, look, if I'm going to do any media, I got to show up as myself uh, because I can't put on a, an act or a facade for, you know, 10, 20 years. Uh, that gets tiring. Like I already just sure. be myself and, you know, whoever rocks with me, rocks with me. Uh, Speaking of um, cap and hoodie, can you talk us through your fit right now for those you can't see? Okay, so I actually have a McLaren hoodie on, and mm -hmm. um, and I'm I haven't really necessarily picked the team yet. I guess mm -hmm. in F one, I root for different guys for different reasons. But okay. McLaren, that team, uh, they show the best hospitality to me personally when I went to Miami, uh, oh. Miami oh. which was a I'm couple broke. weeks after I got into it. Literally, yeah, um, I people reached out to some people and I came went down to Miami and McLaren. They hosted, you know, me, uh, one of my friends, actually, he was the connect oh. and, um, you know, gave us a bunch of gear and we were in the McLaren race house. So we got to watch wow. you know, qualifying and meet all the their president is actually at least McLaren USA is actually a black dude. Oh, uh, wow. Nicholas, but, uh, not, not not Zach Brown, but yeah, uh, yeah, the president yeah. of actually McLaren US is a black dude based out of uh, New York, uh, Nicholas something. But uh, I got to meet a bunch of people in the department, uh, a bunch of people behind the scenes, and they were really mm -hmm. dope. But uh, So I got the McLaren hoodie on that I copped, uh, F1 Miami. And then my hat is, um, this is my hat, it's my merch. I see you guys dropped some merch too. Definitely yeah, gotta go did. get some of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, we'll do like a swap. So we'll do a gifts. swap. Give, send, yeah, me we'll address. Address. Yeah. send me your address. Send me your address. We'll yeah. do a swap, bro. All right, yeah. that sounds good. Right. Um, so I just want to say I always knew McLaren were hospitable. hospitable. I always knew it. I said it to you. You did. I can tell McLaren very, very, even very they, much so. Even though they don't perform very well, I feel like they're the type to offer you a cup of tea. Yeah. No, I, I, they, 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 they laid it out right. They laid, yeah, laid out the yeah, real yeah. carpet. They were good people, I must say. I, I can imagine Zach Brown knows so because that guy is a commercial monster. Like the way that the McLaren get deal after deal after deal. Mm. Like he knows how to schmooze. He knows yeah. how to treat people. And I think that probably filters down and he probably wants that for He's the rest of the team. He's sending the gift baskets. He's sending the edible arrangements. Mm. You mean. Yeah. The rest no. of them are just... That's what it is. Really <laughs> sandwiches, tuna sandwiches <laughs> for the oh, rest no, of they had <laughs> food out there. They were swapping the food out every 30 minutes. Yeah, live music. Hey, yeah, yeah. You know, it's hot. Wow. It was hot down there. Oh, uh, yeah. It was uh, wow. the F1 went, they went above and just experiencing that. It was very mm. similar to like the Super Bowl for us. I was going to say, like, what, what was your experience of Miami? Like, I guess, and as of, 
it would have been your first race, right? First one, yeah. Yeah. So, what was your experience of like an F one race? You obviously had like a great way of going there with you know with your uh, your paddock passes and so forth. But how was it seeing it from seeing it on a TV yeah. to actually being there and getting that behind the scenes yeah. Man, kind of footage? It, it was incredible. Just like because we you know uh, been in Miami and driving past where they were because they had to put together the track and that took months oh, and months yeah, and months. Of so I kind of seeing it all kind of develop. Um, over time and then showing up and seeing, you know, everything together. Uh, all the people were so, so excited to be there. You knew half of them had no clue what was going on, but it was <laughs> like, there's a lot of people here, like it's a lot of money. Like I'm here to to, to have a good time, but uh, it was it was well organized. It was very put together. Like I said, I would, I would compare it to like a Super Bowl for us, which happens, mm. you know, one time a year. Yeah. And it's like the biggest thing, you know, in the world and like this, F1 does this, you know, every weekend, every other weekend in a different spot. So it was uh, just incredible. And then the cars, you know, seeing the speed, uh, watching the race, uh, it, it doesn't do it any justice. Like the cameras, like literally can't do it. Any yeah, justice. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it's amazing, man. It's just the energy. Uh, and that's kind of what drew me to the sport. Obviously, the high speed and the adrenaline and all those different things. But as I started watching the, the, the series and, you know, just hearing more of the behind the scenes, you hear how mm. much... And see how, how important teamwork is, how important yeah. communication is, execution, all these different things that, you know, go across every sport. And, and, and as nice. a team sport, I felt very, very similar to football. And in the same way where shit, these dudes are putting their life on the line, too. It, it's gotten more safer over the years, just yeah. like football has. But I know, you know, people that are messed up and I know it can only be one hit, you know, one crash away. So for all those reasons, that's kind of why. It, you know, jump right up there for me as far as I've uh, been one of my favorite sports. That's incredible. That's, cool. That's so cool. So like, I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned before as well, the idea of, you know, someone coming up to you in the locker room just before game time, where she's got your oh, earphones man. in, like, you, that would be insane. And, uh, and obviously you mentioned the teamwork aspect there. So, you know, I guess putting yourself in as a professional athlete, you must have, I guess, in putting yourself in the uh, boots of the drivers, there must yep. be an insane amount of respect from professional athlete to professional athlete for, I guess, what Formula One drivers kind of have to do in that sport, I guess. Is that been a something that has increased? You know what? I say no. I okay. actually push back on that. It's, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that tremendous <laughs> level of of respect that they have for me. But uh, I, I have a co-host of my podcast, Man yeah. the Man Pod. I played yeah. not nine years in the league. He played fourteen years, oh, wow. and he's kind of like, man, those aren't athletes. Like <laughs> those, they're as much as athletes are as you know, game video gamers or golfers oh, are athletes. God. And I'm like, you know. Man, you, you're nuts, man. It's yeah. adrenaline. It's, you know, pinpoint decisions at 180 yeah. in and out of a, mm. a chicane. Like, it, it's so much that goes into it. You see their weight, how much weight they lose sitting yeah. in that car. Yeah. The aspect, what they're dealing with. Uh, but he wasn't trying to. He's like, if anybody's an athlete, it's the pit crew. I give them the athlete <laughs> pass because of what they have to do physically. Exactly. So, no, I would say the <laughs> overall appreciation um, isn't there. And once, and I think once again that be, that's because um, you know it's some level of ignorance too. If you don't yeah. know what these drivers are really dealing with, or people feel like, yeah, put me in a car, I can get in there and turn left or right. <laughs> I can do that too. I drive fast, but it's a it's a completely different ball game. So I respect, um, you know, all those you know men and women in there that's that's handling from the top to the bottom. That's incredible, incredible. So yeah, who's your who's your favorite driver? He's well, I mean, Lewis, sir, 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 okay. Lewis is, okay. you know that that goes without saying, um, and that's another thing that got me like oh shit in the black dude because i knew his name Yay. and as crazy as it sounds i wouldn't have been able to pick lewis hamilton out of a line nine up three years ago mm. and he's been this dominant in, in this sport that is so huge you know worldwide but it's just not big as big here um but then seeing it like oh it's like it's a black dude that's been dominating this sport you know basically since i've been around and um, so it, I feel like I got in at the perfect time, honestly, because he's, you know, still dominating Mercedes, just who they are. And I know coming into it, I just feel like I'm not supposed to like Max. I feel like I'm not supposed to like Max for staff. I feel it's like he's so the funny. I was But I like him. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I love him. Like, as a football player, he gives me football player vibes. Like, I had a lot of teammates that were like, like, it's just cut. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to win by any cause. Like, when you hear him on the radio, 
Like if you could tell it how much it matters, like how much he, you know, cares uh, in that cockpit. When shit ain't going right, like he gonna let you know, like, oh, what the, you know, and it may sound like bitching or crying to a lot of people, but I, I appreciate that as an athlete. Like I wanted, I want that type of pressure on uh, to perform in uh, the way that he drives. You know, he drives like a football player, like kind of, you know, get the fuck out of my way. I got somewhere to be. Uh, so I, I, li I like him, uh, Lewis. And then uh, I'm a big, I'm a Leclerc fan too. I feel okay. sorry for him. I feel, okay. I feel sorry for him. Fair. I mean, I feel you where you're going on about villains because all through my childhood, like I'd watch all the Disney films and I'd be like, I'm not into the princesses. I'm into like the <laughs> villains. So it would be on character for me to like Max. Unfortunately, I don't. But I hear what you're saying. I do get it. <laughs> I, I get it. After so days. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, go ahead. I was just saying, I mean, just watching it and like mm -hmm. I said, being new to it coming in. It's like, yeah. And then I, you know, on the flip side, it's like, it's got to be easy at this point to be a Max Verstappen fan in a Red Bull. And you look at the car, I think Ferrari actually has the best yeah. car this year, but the management is so shitty that, it, you know, it doesn't matter. The drivers are pretty good. I think Mercedes got the best driver pairing. Nice. But if you look at all of them from top to bottom, Red Bull, they got pretty good drivers. Obviously with Max, really good drivers. The car is you know, really, really good. And then the management, I think, is, you know, excellent. It's top tier. Like, if, if it's mm -hmm. a strategy game, I feel like Red Bull is going to win that damn near every Sunday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Uh, that's, 100%. A, that's an easy bet. Yeah. yeah I mean, look. Uh... I think we had this conversation earlier this week. We were just like, the car is amazing. There's no doubt of my mind that you cannot watch Formula 1 this season and say, and not easily become a Red Bull fan, obviously. Mm -hmm. That car's just like a spaceship. It's amazing. Yeah, and they always and they've got the strategy. Yeah, they've always got the strategy. Yeah, that that's where yeah. they don't. Got the strategy. I mean, yeah, I won a lot of money this last race. Okay, with, uh, him <laughs> with him starting at P ten. Obviously, he had some some power unit. And magic. Can you guys educate me on this? So sure. Sands uh, had to upgrade some parts. I forgot what it was, but he had to upgrade. He had to start on the back of the grid because of the penalties. Yeah. And then Red Bull, Max, he had issues with his power unit, I believe, like yeah. during qualifying Q3, mm. but he was able to upgrade without penalties. How, how does that work? So you have an allocation of engines every season. And I think, um, and it's like different components within the engine that you can upgrade. So there's like the ICE and then there's the, mm -hmm. which is the internal combustion engine. And then I think you can upgrade like the KERS, which is the kinetic energy recovery system, which is what they kind of use to generate energy through the battery as they, and they can use it as like a boost. Um, okay. That's the so, ERS? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I th what I think happened with Max, either they, if they, if they didn't just fix it, or basically, yeah, if they replaced it, or if they replaced parts, he was still under his allocation for, uh, for parts, uh, which means that if he goes above like three, then he's going to mm -hmm. get a big grid So I think they're saying it's pretty okay. much, pretty much guaranteed now after that, that Max is going to have some kind of grid penalty between now and the end of the season, because it's impossible that he's going to be able to run that engine in that spec for nine more okay. races. So that's, and that's the problem with Ferrari now. They've gone through all these parts. They've tried everything. Like, yeah, and like, you know, the cars, <laughs> kind of was on, kind of, uh, science car was on fire at one point. Uh, that yeah. he, that he now, if anything ever happens to his car and his engine, we well, needs to replace parts. He's going to be starting from from the back uh, mm -hmm. every time, and that well, he's going to have a ten yes. ten place bid penalty. So, what do you uh, what do you what, what are your thoughts on Ferrari's chances? Then you know you said you know you like Max and Red Bull going forward, but any thoughts mm. on Ferrari? <laughs> Man, no, no, no chance. I I have no faith, uh, especially <laughs> after this last Grand Prix when they started what two and three on the grid, and then going um, you know to the hearts at that point. Um, and then Le Leclerc, you know, it's been a few races where he's been in the lead and either spun out or something else happened. I just don't have faith in him. And I don't, when just looking at that pit wall, I'd be like, I, I lose more confidence the more I see him, honestly. Like Mercedes, I feel like got this shit all together. Yeah. Red Bull, same thing. Uh, Mercedes, I, you know, it just, they just been, haven't really been able to figure that car out, um, I, at least from my standpoint. Mm. Uh, but I, I got no faith in Ferrari, man, no faith. <laughs> I, Mate, I saw this meme which was like Ferrari 
Ferrari's engines are like, you know, when you scrape burnt toast or like burnt pizza, you just scrape it off. That's what they're doing all season. <laughs> yeah, it, it can't get out of their own way. And they're like I said, I, I feel like the they're pace literally their own enemy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I see it. I see, you know, I see the same thing in football. You mm-hmm. know, you have good talent. You have because you know when you're playing sports, like it's a fine line between the best and the the worst guys on the field uh mm-hmm. and everybody has talented players but what what what's the management like what's the execution and then mm-hmm. everybody has a game plan until whatever starts to happen so we have to adjust on the fly so what teams adjust um better and you saw like last grand prix i think it was i can't remember who but they put the hearts on early and yeah, everybody nah. were talking about literally the home <laughs> for 40 laps like hey the hearts have been shitty all <laughs> afternoon and it's like you know, they mm-hmm. had to go there and they and then I heard Toto talking. He was like, you know, Ferrari kind of made that mistake, I think, Friday or Saturday with their tire allocation. So um, it, it's just interesting to watch for so many different aspects. But, yeah, Ferrari, man, I feel like they have to make some some major uh, changes mm-hmm. at some point to be, you know, to win. Cause they had the car this year to win it. And now I feel like they're damn near out of reach. If you kind of okay so say you've brought in listeners to this podcast who have no idea about formula one if you can compare if you can compare mercedes ferrari and red bull to any um american football team oh that's easy mercedes that's 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 the patriots mercedes are the patriots for sure toto would be uh belichick lewis would be the tom brady um Mm -hmm. of the team um Mm -hmm. because as good as Toto is, and this is with my short time watching it, I can hear Lewis. And this is another part I love about F1 is the transparency. Like I can hear mm. what's going on from the car to the wall. So you hear yeah. Lewis at times say like, oh, I feel great on these tires. Like I can get, you know, this much more. I can do this. Like it's a lot more dialogue and it's a lot more trust. Obviously he's built up there. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Um, and then I would say like Red Bull would be like the Rams, you know, kind of like the, the, the guys that are coming you know, they've been good before mm. and now they're coming back and they're looking really, really good. Like Sean McVay, Matt Stafford, all, yeah. they are all these different weapons and they come and they're going, you know, win the championship. And then Ferrari, man, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know <laughs> I feel Ferrari. like this answer could be like disrespectful to whoever you like say they are. Maybe the Cowboys. I don't know. The Cowboys. I'm supposed to say the Cowboys. So like know, rich history, got- but... Yeah, you Not got the extra. I mean, I have Cowboys match to be honest, because See? my cousins live in Texas, so that's what I always used to get, like in Dallas. I was gonna say the, the because brand. sometimes I sometimes I venture over to like American football Twitter and I don't really know what's going on, but everyone seems to be the um yeah, yeah. And but everyone seems to really like roast the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, see the Steelers that's that's one of the more story franchises in uh, mm. in the in the NFL, and they they just mm. it still is going to be competitive every year. It doesn't matter who's mm. playing, who's their quarterback. They're known for like being tough, great mm. defense, not changing leadership, also stability. Mm. Uh, Mike mm. Tomlin, a uh, black head coach, he's okay. been there 15 years and never had a losing season. Wow! Uh, okay. So that's regardless of injuries and all those different things. So I. Definitely would not compare <laughs> the, uh, the Ferrari sorry. to the Steelers. <laughs> Way more stability, respect, organization. Uh, they, the Steelers, their ownership group has done a ton as far as like um, advancing minorities too, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and but also, Ferrari, I, I like I, Ferrari as well. Ferrari, yeah, not, see, see, not, see. not a single. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's not a single black guy Thank in you. that factory. There's Are we sure days. though? Like, have we actually not spotted anyone? No, like I, press pictures. Maybe a guy, a little bit of somebody. Not even any, like, I've not seen. Not even they got him on the video. Got game. a bit of a mix. Yeah, they're not because you know what? They would have pushed him out front at some point. Like at some yeah, point, they would have just been like, "Hi, Black History Month. Here's your new." <laughs> <laughs> <And I'm> black guys. <laughs> Look at our black. Social media guys. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, they would. They would have if they had it. But I, I would compare Ferrari though. To the Cowboys, you know, everybody mm. knows the name brand. Everyone knows Ferrari, um, the expectations mm. are expectations. Cowboys, dominant, rich history, bunch of Super Bowl championships. Ferrari, same thing, rich history, bunch of champions. But, mm. you know, what are you doing now? Everybody's excited. Everybody can look at you and know you have the talent and the pieces, but you're not mm. putting it together. Um, and that's kind of exactly how the Cowboys in season ended 
last year was with a malfunction yeah. with like clock management, something yeah. simple yeah, that you should never that. do as a quarterback, as a team, and they end up losing the game because of. So Ferrari, Cowboys for sure. <laughs> that, is a, that was a great I question. That. I guess whilst we're doing the NFL Formula One comparison, thoughts mm-hmm. on Lewis Hamilton uh, recently becoming part of the consortium to take over the oh. Broncos. Um, mm. There are a bunch of new Bronco fans within F1 Twitter now. Oh, yeah. And uh, their social media manager must have been like, what the hell is going on? Right <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> <That's a fact. laughs> Why do they tweet like that? <laughs> After, uh, <laughs> even when the Grand Prix came down here to Miami and, and everyone saw Lewis in the picture with, I think it was Jordan and Beckham and Brady. Yeah. And Brady. Oh my God. Like that, that kind of brought his face to a lot more people over here. Mm. But it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, uh, seeing Lewis Hamilton, you know, enter that, that ownership group. And they already had, um, they have a, one of the young ladies there too, a black lady, um, oh. kind of runs Starbucks, I believe. Yeah. She's yeah. married to George Lucas. George Lucas. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, they have a diverse, uh, owner, ownership group and, and I and that's incredible to see and then for, to see someone uh from Lewis Hamilton's stature join Me- that group um it's Melody it's, Hobson it's incredible Melody Hobson that's her name, that's her name. Her name was Melody Hobson so um having her Melody Hobson Lewis Hamilton uh that's that's huge um because you look around at the owners the different owners of the team and you don't see many black ones at all um especially mm. majority owners so it's just good to see him especially with that face that name bring to the sport um, it's awesome. Can I ask you a question, Darius? Obviously, I'm going to because this is a <laughs> podcast. Um, Absolutely. So, F1 has seen its fair share of controversy regarding. Wait, has it? No. <laughs> yes, racism. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I can. I can see. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess it's this question's twofold, but I guess one. I guess. Uh, what are your thoughts on, I guess, the makeup and demographic of F1 as a sport? And I guess how mm. you see it from as an American, as a black American looking in. And I guess, two, how does it compare to the NFL? And I, I guess the NFL has its own kind of, as its own story, I guess. With oh, yeah. race and, and that's, you know, we could do a whole podcast on that. But how, I guess, how does it compare with what you see as, I guess, as an NFL pla- fan and someone who, who works within the media? Um, I'm, Number one, I would say probably very similar. And mm. that's just kind of how it's been, Uh, you know, a lot of the higher you go up, you know, the, the wider the faces get. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's for us and, and over here, it's been, you know, we've had issues with head, head coaches being hired, mm-hmm. uh, general managers, you know, executives. And then obviously, you know, there's no black owners. Yeah. Um, there is, I think, Shaq Khan. Uh, I'm trying to think of now maybe one or two uh, non-white owners. So when I look at F1, I obviously see the same thing. You see Lewis out there. But um, as far as the representation beyond that, you don't see much. Mm-hmm. But it's it it still comes off as somewhat diverse because it is, you know, people from different parts of the world, you know, as opposed yeah. to America, it's like it's white Americans or, you know, it's, it's, you know, Jewish Americans, whatever you want. That's, that's basically who runs the show. And then over there, you, you see Italians, you see Dutchmen, you see people, yeah. you get, like you see people from all over Russia. So it's still diverse in a sense, even yeah. though, you know, if I <laughs> ask my grandma, she's going to say, they're hey, hey, all white. All white people, you know what I mean? So, but, I can, so it does seem uh, more diverse. And once again, it's something that's, I guess, a little different than here, like mm-hmm. seeing NASCAR, seeing Indy 5, like it looks just like a very white sport. So it still looks very white, mm. um, but you, it seems more diverse. But then once, as you guys know, you know, the racism when it involves black people, like mm-hmm. that's, yeah, it happens maybe differently in different places, but it's all yeah. similar. We all have a somewhat similar experience. There's experiences yeah. that we all share. So yeah. when you see certain things come out, you expect like, you know, the NFL or, or NBA or F1 to take a stronger stance on things. And it doesn't yeah. happen unless once again, they feel like the bottom line is affected or yeah. this is the thing to do for whatever reasons. And that's just the reality of it. So I see a lot of similarities, but the difference is, is so much, it's so international. Yeah. As opposed to here, everything just kind of being, you know, domestic. No, look, I, yeah, I think that's, I think that's the thing, right? I think we almost take for granted in F1 the fact that it is, is the, you know, the, pretty much, I think the, you know, the, 
the only like truly global world championship right and you know mm-hmm. well, the yearly world championship yeah yeah, yeah like yeah. motorsport you know go it's the it's the most elite i'd say world championship where people are going all over the world four different continents um you know 22 races in different countries and uh we do take that for granted i guess because you know mm-hmm. for us it's it's just normal but like i say in the nfl we, we call ourselves world champions too you know <laughs> nba and nfl it's like not yeah it, you know, so yeah, world champs, baby. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, you'll take it. You're not going to say I'm not. So you'll take Facts. that. You'll take that. So I guess for for you, for you let's say on a, but going back to a personal level now, what what's your kind of like personal goal with where you are now, right? So you you've you're, you've created your platforms. Mm-hmm. They have allowed you to kind of get that freelance work on on uh, networks which is only going to increase your personal profile even yep. more to be honest and mm-hmm. you're going to be able to go to the next step from that so i guess kind of looking into you know the next two three four years what what do you see for yourself as like the darius butler brand and i guess uh is that do you want to stay independent or do you see yourself ever getting into like a you know multi-year contract with the network yeah, so ultimately, um, I, I, to get to where I want to go, I'm going to have to partner with different networks mm. and partner okay. with different yeah. people just to, you know, move that yeah. uh, forward. So I, I'll have partnership and I look at them as partnerships. And, you know, sometimes it can be looked at, oh, you're working for this person. But I'd never want to be in a position where because I'm working with or for someone, I can't be myself truly and genuinely or even where i feel like personally i may put that person in a bad light and they've invested you know money or whatever towards me so i've been very careful to move um in that way uh i want to call football games so i do want to be someone in the booth calling Mm -hmm. games uh, because i play defense and once again i'm very um and another reason i get a lot of the opportunities that i've gotten is because I started just putting out my own videos. I've seen like, them like yeah, the, yeah. you're breaking down the yeah. like, what's happening. And I, and I guess a lot of the time, look, I'm, wait, I'm what's such defense. Wait, wait. Oh, sorry. yeah, sure. What's actually, defense? yeah, no, that's a really good yeah. point. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> offense, <laughs> so offense is, you know, so it's not like, you know, so, so football, it's like you have people that are just playing defense, and then you have people mm-hmm. that just play offense. Uh, the quarterbacks right. obviously lead the offense, so they always have the ball. So those are the people that get the most eyes, the most attention, quarterbacks and offense, because they score the touchdowns, they score the points. Ultimately, how the game and the rules are, they put people in the stands, sell tickets, whatever, whatever. So um, everything is kind of uh, pushed towards the offense as far as media and everything. And defensively, a lot of people can't really speak to what's going on on defense, especially mm-hmm. when it's happening live and it's moving fast and it's doing these different things. Uh, I was fortunate to play, you know, nine years. I played for some of the best coaches ever and I played multiple positions. Um, so I can really, uh, you know, talk, talk through it. And I not only talk through it, but I can kind of break it down in layman's terms for people to understand it. So that after you watch a two and a half minute video, like you feel smarter about the game of football. So, there's not many people doing that in the booth. And once again, that's another place that's very white when you watch yeah. football. So you mm-hmm. watch football over here, you see, you know, 70% of the dudes on the field are black, including even the quarterback position, which was very white for a long time. Yeah. And then you look in the booth, you look at all the top teams, you know, it's usually two or three people that are in the booth calling plays. Most of them are all white. Most of them are former quarterbacks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I want to kind of break that mold as well. And I already know it's kind of a, a hunger for that. Like people want to not just hear the same things over and over. They want to know, Hey, how did this coverage break down? Like what, who, who's at fault here? What could they have done differently? Um, and hear it from a person that can, you know, be excited about it, know what the hell they're talking about. And, uh, more importantly, make you feel a little bit smarter. Cause I don't want to hear somebody talking. Everything's going over my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you <laughs> listen to me call games or break down film, every time you should walk out and feel a little bit better. And I know it's working because I've had uh, front office people reach out to me from oh, different wow. teams. I've had coaches, I've had players. And then a lot of people in TV that have reached out uh, and either want to have conversations, have conversations, will ask me things. And I appreciate that because I also see a lot of people who will watch my shit and they just repeat my shit on TV. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. I, like you don't even talk like that. Like you don't even know what that means. But you know the real, the the real always. You know you can't you can't replicate 
um, my IP essentially. Like you can't do that on a day in day out basis. So I'm not worried about it, but, but I see you though. I see you. You yes. just like me for real. You just like, <laughs> That's like me. me. Don't think we don't see you guys. We, we speak, we see. We, we see. see it. Just because we don't respond doesn't mean we Fun. don't see it. We don't facts. see it. Big facts. I speak in proverbs all the time. <laughs> That's how I am. I don't have to be drunk. <clears throat> I speak in proverbs. Don't try it on your little podcast. I, we see you. <laughs> <laughs> and our spies will message me and be like, Tony, go check it out. I don't have the time. Yeah, yeah, have you have, you have, yep, you definitely have people. Like, hey, hey, deep blood. I just game. heard you say yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This morning on your you party, you know what? You, okay, you know, it's crazy. Just, that's okay. You know what? Because yeah, yeah, you, you can't outsource the source. Sure. Okay. Yeah. You cannot. You it, it's, it's, it's here. It's here. It's different. If you try to take it, you try. You don't have that. It's like mm-hmm. the KFC's eleven seasonings. You don't know them. Don't no copy it. <laughs> um, so, and I look just be quickly. I, I just think that's a really cool thing because I think it's about finding a niche, right? Finding yeah. a niche, finding yeah. a USP, and like, like I say, you've not only are you, you know, I guess there'll always be people, you know, I guess me and Tandy, right? There'll always be people who are who are good on a camera, who are good at talking or whatever, yeah. right? But I guess if you were doing a podcast about hip hop. We mm. we might do well, but it wouldn't have cut through as much as it has because we're talking about Formula One, and that's a niche yeah. that we're both extremely knowledge about, and that's cutting through. And I guess with yourself, like you say, everything's so offense related, and everything's that's the glory stuff that yeah. I think, and then I think fans as well. Even in F one, there's been a a growth of fans who want more than what they're getting on national tv right they want the tech analysis they want you know a strategy analysis tire breakdowns they want yeah. all this stuff and i'm sure there's a there's a hunger for that in in, in what you're doing as well and and yeah very very yeah. much so and i'm i'm excited to uh to provide it and now even with this f1 thing you know being that i am passionate about it and whatever i get into i'm one of those people that i i just Oh, in the rabbit hole. I'm in a rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm on YouTube. I'm following different pages. I'm following the things um, on Twitter. And I, I love Twitter. That's that's kind of like my wheelhouse has been for over a decade. But yeah. um, so yeah. I can find out, you know, damn near anything from there. So uh, I've, I've enjoyed it. And now going into this fall, it's going to be crazy because I'm going to have a show that comes on. It's like a, a kickoff show on Sunday mornings. Yeah. It's come on pretty early. And then F1, obviously at nine, usually over here, 9 a.m. Nice. in the morning. And then I'll have football from 1 p.m. Wow. on. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a big practice guy yet with F1, but qualifying, I always watch qualifying. Practice yeah. is so boring. Like, yeah, can we pra- just I, openly yeah. say this? Like, we need to stop <laughs> making out like practice is fun. Practice is for people like Nyasha who have six TVs in their house and every single one is playing practice. Nobody watches practice apart from people like Nyasha who want to analyze it and just eat and feed and breathe for me. I work. am obsessed, Darius. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, like, don't, I don't get it. I'm not just, there yet. No, there yet. You'll you get there, bro. You go to his there, house bro. and you're hearing different TVs just playing the same channel, the same good... Let's be honest, Formula One only has the same channel. I, you know what it is, Darius? I get I sometimes... TV too. Do you know what yeah, I mean? I sometimes I'll be, in my, I'll be in my room, I'll watch F1 and I'll, okay, let me go downstairs to get some food. I'll put the F1 on downstairs <laughs> and then I'll go to the kitchen and I might have to, you know, I'll put it on in there, but look... Makes sense. Fine. It makes sense. And then you knock on his door and he's like, Why are you knocking like the police in my right. house? You see, Bro, this is see, because F, you can't hear me past F1. We're now involving Darius in our personal squad. So I think this is a <laughs> this is a per, this is probably a good time to say, look, bro, thank you so much. This has been an incredible conversation. Where can people find you online? Mm-hmm. All right, so um uh, my social media on Twitter, on Instagram, Darius at Darius J Butler. Um, on both of those, and then on YouTube, uh, the Man to Man Pod. I go live every Monday and Thursday, 11 a.m. Mm. Eastern uh, Standard Time. We go 11 to 12, and then um, on Saturday we put out like a pick show. We're picking all the winners, and that will turn into a Saturday Sunday morning show now with oh. F1 because I'm going all in. Nobody oh, over wow. here. I'm early. I, I'm still early over here, especially of in course. the media space. Yeah, uh, mm. with this F1, but I feel like it's going to be a lot of football fans that kind of cross over into it for a lot of the same reasons yeah. that I have. So don't be surprised if two years from now, this black ass face, the biggest 
voice <laughs> over in the states when it comes to f oh wow yeah, that's where you can find is. me i hope i hope it is and I you know and then that. you can remember and then you can who was you know oh damn right you know, always you know what i'm saying Davis? You know, always mom on, told me uh, hey the same people you meet on your way up you meet on the way down mm, so i treat everybody cool. the same uh exactly. we good but i can't i can't wait to come back home with you guys man especially you know once some grand prix are happening Darius, and you be fun. Are, you oh are yeah invited all the time yeah. We're gonna send you out some merch. We'll do a merch swap. Merch, merch swap, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. We'll do it, and yeah, we'll get you mm-hmm. one for a post race at some point this season as well. So absolutely, that would be awesome. Thank you so Sorry, much. Darren. Where did you oh, Where did you find us? Twitter. Okay. Fair. Yeah, Twitter. I, um, <laughs> and I saw because I, I, you know, I want to. I, I watch. Uh, you know what? I may have found you guys through on the chicane. Okay. Oh wow. That's our friend yes. Paris. Shout out Paris. Oh, yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah. So yeah. I got introduced to her on like Clubhouse a while ago. Yeah, um, with course. the black women watching sports. So it yeah. all kind of, so that's how I found you guys. Mm. And then I think I saw one post out. Oh, yep, follow these these these, <laughs> these are people I want to hear uh, yeah, talk shout about. Shout out airport. Paris. Yeah. All so time, shout out you know, all the and all you guys. Well. Obviously, you guys. And Marie, you guys yeah. are incredible. No, but yeah, black creators, man, especially in this space, you know, I I, I gotta support and, and, and it's entertaining. This is how I want to, this is how we talk mm. about sports. So, if mm. I, any type of sport, so um, yeah. appreciate what you guys are providing. No, guys, that, that, I will follow you on socials. I'm so sorry I didn't do it. Follow you in the <laughs> <laughs> it's just ignoring you, it. it's too I'm good. So sorry. So, you know what, Darius? The more we elevate, she, she, she's sniffing that rarefied air, and she's changing on me, you know. She's, hey, you know, hey, nothing wrong with that. You can't exactly, stay the same. <laughs> exactly. I've been telling you, me. we went on another podcast the other day, and they were like, Tandy, are you even in, are you in London right now? And I was like, I love that for me that you guys presume I might be in a different country. Country, but I'm not. Damn right, <laughs> not today. Yeah. Not it. today. Well, look, Darius, thank you so much. We're gonna stay on this call, but f- okay. Feel free to. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna just kick you out, but feel free to. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one. Thank you so much, Darius. Thank you. Send your address, Darius. All right, yeah, we'll send do. your address, please. What a lovely guy. What a, what a great guy. What a lovely guy. We need to make uh, sure we send him some match. Yeah, for sure, for mm. sure. He, um, you know what, man? Sometimes we have people on. You know when you see like levels, you see levels to this shit, right? You know, mm-hmm. I think I'm a pretty good. I'm pretty good. You're uh, on the same echelon. Don't ever don't, a... oh, no. don't don't start your conversation about you see <laughs> oh, no, you're but, on that but, same but, level. But, but all I'm saying is, he's very good. You know when you see someone's got a presence and uh, you know his voice, and I just look, he's gonna go. But very that's far. what I mean, though. Like it's media training that mm. you can tell that he got as in his professional career as a football player. But at the mm. same time, what I was saying is, why I said his broadcasting is good, because obviously I've done a journalism degree and I did oh, a, yeah. a broadcasting module. And yeah. I think his broadcasting, from what I can tell, would tick the boxes, is fantastic. Mm. So kudos to him on doing it. And a hundred percent, I'm so here for black men who are retired players going into explaining stuff. Mm. Yeah, no, the way I think- he was explaining it. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think for me, what I really got from that is I, the four, like, look, the bigger this platform, our platform gets, the more and more I'm mm-hmm. kind of realizing, you know, the value of it, right? Mm. You know. One day, grandpa was in the garden. And he was- <laughs> I mean, we're, we're sitting on gold. <laughs> like, no, for sure, right? Like, you know, you, you don't realize, I don't think you, you, you don't start something. Okay, look, I know that we didn't start this with the intention for it to have gone as, I don't think we ever imagined that it would what go as What were we actually we doing when we started? Um, so when we started, it was just like, I think one day I'm just going to put the email out that I sent you. But I think it was just, hey, you I think I DM'd email? you. I sent you a DM that I was like, I'll mm. follow up with an email. I was like, look, mm. yo, do you... I just said, like, do you want to just do, I've been thinking, like, do you want to do an F1 podcast? Like, we could just talk about it after the race. I just wanted to talk about F1. And, 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 you know, it's kind of growing and growing. What I've noticed is because we're so authentic mm. and we, we brought something so different mm. that I will not lie, at a point, maybe, maybe two months ago, mm. 
there was a point where I was like, how far can this really go? Like, if we're the way we are, like, mm -hmm. you know, and of course you can't, we won't, we're not going to stay the same, but mm -hmm. the conversations that we've had recently and the achievements that we've done recently have really made me aware that everyone is watching and at some point you people are going to message you because you will fulfill a need that you have for them yeah like so you know I mean? also touching on that yeah 100 percent. because there's conversations we have had say i've been with like friends or whatever and people will be like oh yeah your podcast you guys say some wild shit mm. okay yeah but that is what my podcast is <laughs> yes and one day you're gonna need this wow shit yeah shit me and uh, yes and and that's it and yeah. and at the end of the day i don't want to at the end of the day right back then they didn't want me now they uh, all uh, back then uh, they didn't want like, me. i just can't i don't think it's normal what we've done yeah yeah of course, the yeah. live show sorry i haven't actually spoken to you you've not been on the pod since the live show so i guess it'd be really cool to, to really? get you we had the live show then, mean, we had, then we had last week this last show this is where you put all the pictures in the video this okay. last show <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that specific one um, how how are you how i guess yeah what everyone's heard my thoughts and i did like i, I was on my own last week so everyone's kind of mm -hmm. heard my thoughts and everything but what are your thoughts on how do you feel having been part of a, a sold out live show what are your thoughts on on having a merch merch store like i guess what's the what's the view on quick stop from tandy's perspective because everyone knows my perspective but i guess i think people would like to hear how you're feeling and okay so guys the night before quick stop i was going through it i was listening to i was reading um a romance novel and yasha called me and he was like stop reading a new romance novel oh was that the night before that was the night before <laughs> i was drinking red wine as well <laughs> So I wasn't really, like, I didn't really deep what was going on. I work in routine. Monday's this happening. Tuesday's this happening. Mm. Tuesday, Sunday, I woke up, called, got to Nyash's, and then it started to dawn on both of us what we were doing. Yeah, And yeah, we were very yeah. nervous. We were very nervous. We took the tube, like Jay-Z when he went to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> um, you hadn't seen the venue as well. No, I hadn't seen the venue. <laughs> so I um, felt this, like, responsibility, like... I've actually sorted all this out, but if Tandy <laughs> comes in like this is bullshit, then. It's like... <laughs> but even if it was bullshit, what was I gonna say? We yeah, were there we... on the yeah, day, exactly. innit? <laughs> what was gonna happen? Um, and we pulled up to the venue, we were like, and there was all this like support already waiting. Like yeah. people were already like, let's. People were like trying to get into the main room when we were trying to still. It was, and then I said, wow, and then meeting so many lovely people who were just. Like, guys, I don't think you realize what you've done. People were coming up to me during the interludes when we were getting drinks, etc. Yeah. Like, please, could you do this every week? I cannot do that every week no. because I have a life. No, you can't. But I'd love to, <laughs> as much as I'd love to. No, if we had a team, etc., we would probably try to do it, but we have yeah. lives, girlfriends, etc. I don't. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but um, I'm still not doing it every week. <laughs> but we're not doing it every week. Um, but it was for me, what really, there was two moments, two moments mm. that really, really hit for me. It was A, um, being in a room where I stopped for a moment and everyone was watching the, the, like, the race and I stopped and I looked around and everybody in there was off colour and everybody felt safe and everyone was mingling and it was like, where else can I go? on yeah. this planet in the yeah. UK where I can be with other Team LH fans or just general Formula One fans. Cause it wasn't only Team LH, I think that's the perspective. It and wasn't it wasn't only LH people there. of color. So there were, there were yeah, white people there. Were, there and, were white and, people there, yeah. And you were, you were exceptionally believed. My friend, you. my friends came. My, I got yeah. White, like, yeah, my yeah, friends exactly. Liam and Martin came. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing all these people who weren't even only team at team LH. we had like different people from we had everyone McLaren, trust me mclaren JP from red bull red bull yeah, yeah do you know what i mean yeah. and we were just all there collectively just enjoying the fun booing hissing shouting screaming laughing crazy. we all mutually had this comedic 
thing that only Formula One fans think of, or maybe you're That's thinking. That's the thing the, which got me, yeah. Like, do you guys laugh as well when like, he does stuff like that? Do you mean? Yeah, like, the, everyone was laughing at the Ferrari strategy mm -hmm. and everyone, you know, when, you know, when uh, just like little things that only, only Formula One fans mm -hmm. or in, intrinsic Formula One fans would know. Yeah. You feel like, wow, I am actually part of a community here. And so many I mean, people, because I wanted to approach everyone and say individually, yeah, thank you for coming, yeah, thank you yeah, for being yeah. here. Everyone would be like, oh, I'd be like, do you listen to the podcast? I'd be like, yeah, I do, but my mate brought me here. Yeah. My mate brought me here. This yeah. brought me here. Second of all, shout out all the women that came out. My goodness. Oof. There were girls from Leeds. And I was with women. some girls from Sheffield. Hey, it no. was they let me tell you right in. now guys they wore merch they made their own merch to come yeah, to the event you that guys was, that was awesome she looked great also shout out the women who came together to do a watch party all the way in new york what the hell yeah what big up hell? um team team lh nyc NY, yeah, crystal NYC. um always supporting i just seen mm -hmm. you put some merch and you're always showing a thing on instagram as well what so i wanted to shout you out you're mm -hmm. a real one that's super that's cool. Nyasha, that i shed a tear i shed a little thug tear when we, got, really? when we all got back yeah it was very it was very emotional for me to actually know that people who were like we can't get tickets but we're going to do a little watch party in new york Are you yeah mad? no that's awesome Damn, that was that's awesome. crazy uh, uh, and then oh, yeah. the final one the final <laughs> bit that really got me was um someone approached me outside when i was with my my friends rochelle martin and liam shout out them for coming out as well mm. and they were like tandy i'm from the wirral yeah yeah. <laughs> they cried. yeah he was like i'm from the wirral i've drove all the way up you're sick That's and crazy. then he ran off and left because he had to go back to the wirral to but the that wirral, just reminded yeah. me of all the times i'd come down to london for something i absolutely believed in mm -hmm. and like i'd be thinking right i need to be i need to get the train by this time or else i'm not getting home yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he probably comes so early just for that little snippet to sit amongst other people <sighs> You know, it was it was humbling. It was humbling. Yeah. I've and it was all ages as well. There was loads of all ages. All ages. Do you know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from oh, I don't want to say young, young to old, but yeah, but yeah, there yeah. was young to older. Yeah, all ages. Uh, there was, was Americans good. there. Big up Jocelyn. That was really nice. Yeah. Very, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Look, I've mm. decided. I'm not going to talk about recent events, but I've decided. I don't care. Yeah, I'm, that's done now. No. I'm going to focus on positive things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put positive things out into the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on the support we get because we have the best support of any podcast in the world. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to focus on the good things that are coming our way. We just had a merch door open. Were people from all over the world buying stuff? Mm. South Africa, Latvia, mm. Romania, America. Like, it's crazy. Mm. Designs that I made on my laptop, channeling my inner Kanye West, and <laughs> people, <laughs> people are buying them. It's ridiculous. I'm so happy. With no, that. not enough, Kanye. Let's put them all in the front <laughs> of this store. Oh. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, so I'm, I'm just so. I'm so proud um, of this platform and yeah man and that's what's important. also shout out all the Tandy twins I hear it I'd want to talk like me too I don't know how it comes out my mouth sometimes but you know one day I might do a master class on it shout out you lot for admiring my punditry ways and trying to emulate it I get it I get it how I you, once wanted to be Jay-Z too how, do you you, mean? how are you following up that I'm going to be positive positive only. no i'm being positive <laughs> that's me being positive <laughs> i know i know i've know. given it a little bit I, of sly before but that's mm. now me saying but look what's up girls i think bad I th bitches i'm your leader duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and i think that's that is a thing right we are going to be emulated we're going to be what is the other word? Copycated. People probably think <laughs> these cocky fuckers. Oh, it's Listen, time we spoke I'm our shit. I'm, I'm not, not backing asked. down anymore. I'm sick and tired of being polite. Now let's talk about let's that. Let's talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. And look, but I think the roundabout way of saying is 
if you're ever thinking of starting something, if you're ever thinking of, if you have like a creative thing that you want to do, if you have a professional thing you want to do, maybe there's something at work that you're thinking, you know what, I can probably, if I show this to my boss, I think this is somewhere, something that we can help improve the company or something we can help improve the, the culture. But if you have any idea, just do it start that idea mm -hmm. the hardest part is starting after that if you're doing what you love it, it's lovely and uh it's uh yeah man it's uh, a privilege to be on these microphones every week for you guys it's a privilege to get the love that we do get we don't take it for granted mm -hmm. we got yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna cut this in a bit because we're both hot we got a ridiculous amount of messages uh, the other day, oh. and I'm sorry, I, I haven't replied to, to all of them. I'm going to try and get through yeah, and reply. Yeah, we, 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 we haven't replied. We hey, haven't, hey, yeah. Hey. Well, okay, well, hey. well, well, yeah. Don't, don't, don't know. Don't do that. Don't do that. I hope you guys know that if you're ever inboxing the Instagram, it's me. I'm the one who's talking. But some yeah. of me, sometimes I abandon conversations because I can tell you think you're talking to Yash and you want to talk to me. <laughs> but if you ever want to talk to me, I'm the no. one who replies uh, to the Instagram. If any of you, if, if I go into the Instagram inbox and you lot are being weird, I swear to God, <laughs> I swear. Because I'm hardly on there. But if I take a trip over there to see what my shit is doing and there's weird messages in the inbox because Tandy said she's over there, I'm not going to be happy. Yeah. Please, I will block um, you. I'll find your username on every platform and I'll block every you Every platform. Like, don't we'll do even it. Block, we'll even, he'll even block you on Facebook. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> fucking find my Facebook password and I'll block you on there. So look, yeah. guys, um, thank you. We're going to go because look, it's the off season. We're it's spoiling. Stay. I'm it's, warm. It's really hot. We will be back next. Uh, we'll be back next week. Merch is out. The merch is merch out. Merch is out. Merch is out. Merch is out. Merch is out. Guys, we got the out. pink. We got the purple. Mm. We got the blacks. Mm. We got the all whites. All white right, with a retro design. We've got. <laughs> we've got so much stuff. Light plans for the rest before the summer holidays. The Patreon will be out mm -hmm. for Spa. The levels of it are going to be two ninety nine, four ninety nine, and fifteen pounds. Now, if I'm sure you're wondering what the fifteen pound one is, there is no obligation to go with that. That is if you can afford it. But That's with that, how you sell our Patreon? No, no, no. But I'm, cause you, no, because you don't want to. I don't yeah, want to put fair. people under pressure and feel like whatever. On the fifteen pound one, there is merch that will be sent to you th every three months. You will get. Uh, exclusive merchandise that is not available in the store. So there'll be like mugs, t-shirts, prints, and something else. Uh, and uh, the longer you stay, the, the better the thing that you mm -hmm, get. Mm -hmm. But the five pound one will be extra content and the 299 one will be simply so you can listen to us without any adverts. There'll be a video free uh, video and uh, audio with no adverts so if you want to support that's great all of these things are being reinvested into the company so we are going to buy new microphones we are going to be able to uh, we keep uh, uh, saying this we are actually going to buy new we are going to end, of the, end, yeah. of this, end of the season, end of the season. Uh, black friday I'm, I'm waiting for black friday yeah yeah, yeah um yeah. so but if you if you feel like you want to gift us a free microphone <laughs> i will i will send you a free t-shirt we could do a little swap a t-shirt for a mic there you go well it depends what mic it is actually because we're going to go to studio quality mic so yeah. um so <laughs> every, we're just going to upgrade everything cameras um we've got a really cool announcement coming in the next week or so i can't wait to tell you that um and then quick stop Ooh. the next quick stop live save the day it's going to be abu dhabi November 21st Please. or 20th. Here's what I'm going to tell you right now. You've heard me say it, yeah? I don't want to hear no nothing about texting my friends like, how come Tandy didn't invite me to quick stop? Darling, Bro. I've been talking about it for a while, yeah? I'm telling you now. We're telling you now on the me 15th now. of August mm -hmm. that Quick Stop Live, the next one, is on the 20th of September. No, yeah. November, November, November. November. <laughs> okay, 20th of November is the next week. So that is three months notice. Tickets will be out beginning of October, beginning of October. So I'm giving you fair warning. We're going to say it every yeah. week. I don't want any messages when it sells out. Can I, can you get me in please? Can I, can I get a good, can I get a good ticket please? Please. No. You've been warned. No. There's only going North, to be North soup for you. North soup for you. North um, soup for you. <laughs> um, so 
we're gonna yeah. yeah 50 tickets once they're gone they're fucking 50 gone. tickets once again you know once again. Hey, that shit was once packed again. out that shit was packed, that shit out. packed you out you didn't get any more tickets sold if you wanted Trust to me. so look Trust guys me. We love you. Thank you for all of the support you've given us. We're not going to talk on any bad mind shit because that's on them and we're too good for that. Because that's on them and we're too good for that. Yep. And so thank you so much, guys. We love you. We'll see you next week. Love you. And no matter what happens, Tandy. Keep it on the black stuff. He loves it. Take care, guys, (laughs) in in a bit.